Hi, Brian. Hi, Michelle. Thanks for having me on. Thank you so much for joining me. I am so excited to have you. So I don't even know where to start. So first of all, let's go back 36 years because I read something that the first Top Gun movie kind of gave you a little bit of a feeling that, you know, hey, maybe I want to do that. So is that kind of where this all started? It, it is. Uh, you know, so like a lot of other people that were in high school, college at that time, we saw this amazing iconic film that literally defined a generation from filmmaking to music to uh, the military, the Navy and Naval aviation in, in particular. Um, and, and you couldn't watch the film, the original, and, and it'll be the same with this one. You couldn't watch it and not be inspired, at least to think, wow, that's something really special. I knew Naval aviation was something very special. Uh, and I immediately got drawn to it uh, and started going to air shows, watched the Blue Angels and just decided um, that that is what I wanted to do for my life was to land fighters on aircraft carriers and defend America and freedom in combat. And uh, it, it was a great advantage to me as a young person to have a clearly defined goal because that was the only tracks uh, for the railroad was going to do that. It makes it, I wouldn't necessarily, necessarily say easy because it wasn't particularly easy to get there, but it makes it uh, achievable. So that was what brought me into it. Uh, you know, it, that started my path 30 some years ago towards being, uh, you know, a uniformed Navy fighter pilot. And as you talked about the movie, I mean, it really just, it changed everything. Everybody who watched it, it I think it, it changed our thought process in some way. And with the military, you know, the good part is a lot of people were given that insight of just how cool, first of all, it is to be a jet pilot, but just so many things with the Navy and, and loss and, and love. And it's just, it's a wonderful, beautiful story. But with that, the intensity of what these men and now women is going to be shown in the new movie have to go through. I mean, what was that like to try to get people who are not familiar with that and get them up to speed in a short amount of time? Yeah, sure. So backing up, you hit the nail on the head when you said cool job. It, Navy fighter pilot is literally the coolest job in the in the world. Uh, and I get, you know, these actors from the movie that say it's pretty cool being a movie star, but your job's cooler. Uh, <laughs> it is a sport of kings, I'll tell you that. So we had an amazing cast um, and it, we put them all in the jets. So every time you see an actor in a jet, it is an actor or actress in a jet pulling seven G's, going 500 miles an hour, upside down. So to do that, we had to put them through the same survival training that any of us uh, that do this for a living would have to do. You know, a lot of people get sick in airplanes just flying around in a little airplane, uh, that, you know, and, and they can't get over it. And and these folks, this is a this is a career making move. They had to get over it. And of course, there were some people that uh, um, that got sick in the airplane. Uh, you know, I, the, the one I'll mention is because uh, I'm looking over my shoulder at the flag of Texas, and and Glenn Powell is from Texas. Um, and I can do this because he just talked about it on Jimmy Kimmel the other night. Was uh, uh, He was such a trooper because we do these horrible things to him physiologically in the airplane. And he would say, oh, okay, stop. And he'd get sick. And then he'd go right back into it. And he'd come back and he'd get the take. And it would be amazing. Uh, we're doing all this at seven and a half Gs. And it's hot in the airplane. And it's uncomfortable. And it's cramped. Uh, I was... Uh, I was amazed at how well the cast, you know, not just Glenn, but all of them did. They had to go through a grueling, not only the training process to get them through water survival, but to just be in the airplane. It's physically demanding being in a tactical jet aircraft, uh, especially if you're not used to it. I can only Pulling. imagine. And I, and I say only imagine because I, I take Benadryl to, or uh, Dramamine to, to go around the quarter sometimes. So with that training with the actors, you, you have got to experience so many things in your mind, I would think, because I mean, they are Hollywood actors. Some of them are, are just newer actors coming on where they haven't been seen in a lot of things, which will all change with this movie. But what was it like for you to be on that side of, you know, you're, you're meeting Tom, Tom Cruise, Hollywood royalty and getting to work with them. And how was that, you know, working with them and taking direction from you because you are the man in the know? Well, so it was fascinating to say the least. Uh, I'll tell you this, I had a preconceived notion about Hollywood writ large, and it was they're all gonna be entitled, stuck up. Uh, it's gonna be a challenge. I'm gonna have to babysit them. And I was completely wrong in all those things. Everyone from cast to crew to, to every, everybody involved with this process was amazing. They were literally the top guns 
of the film industry. They were as good as anyone gets. And then you look at obviously, you know, Tom Cruise, biggest movie star in the world, does amazing films, does his own stunts. Um, so it, I, I had preconceived notions and I was not looking forward to it. And they shattered all those wonderful people, all of them. And as good as they get at their craft, they're devoted, they're experts. And you'll see when you watch the film, that there's a reason why they are considered the best, uh, you know, as we say in the first movie is Top Gun is the best of the best, but it was, uh, it was a true success story of common goal. Everybody working together, everybody rowing hard, everybody in it for the bigger picture. And when I say bigger picture, I mean all of these cast and crew, they, you know, it's a business, right? They want to get box office and they want to make money, but I'll tell you, I haven't worked with all of them. They were in it for America. Uh, and that was, I think the huge success story. Did it take you back to when you were first starting out and when you had to do that training? Because it, it's so realistic because, I mean, they're literally going through the steps that you did when you first started doing that. Yeah. And, you know, at first they came out and said, hey, can we just wave that or can we just do part of it? And I go, I can't I can't take responsibility for something happening. So I said, no, we got to we got to have them prepared so that if something were to happen, they are as capable and ready as as we are as naval air crew to get out of the airplane, to eject or to, you know, land in the water, land on the land in the desert, get out of the parachute. So, so we made them go through the whole thing. And it was, you know, it, it did bring back some, some thoughts. I have to do that every few years to stay current in airplanes. So uh, it wasn't like I was looking back 20 years at something I did. It's, you know, I did it four years ago. So, uh, but it was, it was tough. And they, you know, everybody did it. Even Tom, he, he goes, well, you know, I did this. So I already did this. And I go, Tom, that was almost 40 years ago. You got to do it again. <laughs> Yeah, he did it. He went through and it was, you know, he did great. So everybody did great. I was very proud of the cast uh, and everybody involved. So let's talk about reality versus we all know movies have the CGI and they can do whatever they want in editing. But how much are we really seeing that is is true to life that they were doing their thing and that's going to be in the film? These are the most complex aerial scenes ever filmed and they're Perfect. And you watch the 800 hours of video we shot to put in, I don't know, like there's 30 minutes of airplanes in a two and a quarter hour movie. Um, and that's the best 30 minutes of 800 hours and everything else just didn't make the cut. And it was all spectacular. When you see airplanes down at, you know, well below 50 feet doing 550, 600 miles an hour, that was actually a Navy airplane with, uh, in that case, uh, a Blue Angel. We, we knew it wasn't going to look right to, unless we did it that way. So uh, that's what I get asked most about is, hey, the really low stuff, that wasn't real, was it? And that was actually very real. Have very minimal CGI. Uh, almost everything you see is actual airplanes doing actual things with real actors in the back. And, of course, Tom, you know, he's he's a skilled pilot. Uh, he's incredibly professional, hardworking, dedicated guy. And it was great working with him as a skilled aviator because I was responsible for all the aerial stuff, making sure we didn't bend or break or crash an airplane. We didn't hurt anybody, scare anybody. So when we'd be doing these really long briefs, because I had to brief the entire evolution before it went, um, some of it can get administratively grueling, but it was all important. And he made sure that everybody was paying attention, listening, and he never, uh, he, he respected my risk management, and my safety approach, because he, I think he knew that it was going to keep people alive. Because everybody talks about Tom does his own stunts and Tom, you know, does all this amazing stuff when he, when he's making a movie and the stuntmen are all look bored and the insurance guys all look nervous. And that's really, that's really how it was. The stuntmen, I'm like, Hey Bob, what are you doing today? He goes, Nothing. And then, uh, you know, you look at the insurance the guy and, and he's, you know, on his 14th cup of coffee because he <laughs> hates what's going on. Because Tom's doing all this super high adrenaline, dangerous stuff. But uh, you know, he's a pilot. So he flies the airplanes in the movies. I read something about, I don't know if I have this exact number, but something like 500% increase in recruitment after the first Top Gun movie. So this, no doubt, will hopefully do the same thing. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about, a lot of people may be wondering how much it costs the Navy to be a part of a movie. And a very interesting answer there, because this really was a win-win situation for everybody involved, especially for the Navy looking to get the word out and hopefully get more recruitment. So talk to us about that. Literally every minute of every flight time on the jet and everything we did. And, uh, you know, I would be sending these, these bills to Paramount to have to pay, you know, and uh, I can't I can't talk costing data, but uh, it was not an inexpensive film to make. 
and they had to write checks to the U.S. Treasury, and then that would trickle back down into the Navy's budgetary system. So I would say that was a spectacularly uh, effective investment strategy to spend no money and get what I think is going to be the biggest recruiting tool for the Navy in, well, the last 36 years. Brian, thank you so much for joining me. This has been great. And I I can't say this enough, but congratulations, because uh, job well done and uh, so exciting to see what your work behind the scenes has culminated in with this movie. Well, I was a, I was a very small part of it, but I was glad to uh, glad to have my input. And I hope they, uh, like you said, you, you phrased it so well that they they really get a sense of what this means as, you know, Tom calls it a love letter to aviation, uh, I, which is uh, very eloquent and well said. I look at it as a, uh, a testament to the people that are out there every day and every night around the world on the decks of ships, on the submarines, you know, standing the watch, uh, making it so that you and I can have this interview and, and have the American flag flying out here and not, you know, somebody else's flag and, you know, Red Dawn and tanks in the streets. It's the Navy's here so that we go fight somewhere else and, and nobody has to worry about it at home. So that's a testament to all the people out there you know, my heroes that are uh, out there deployed right now around the world, and certainly the people who have, uh, you know, given the ultimate uh, and, and don't get to come home. We, you know, when you do this job long enough, there was a line in the first movie, you do this long enough, it's going to happen. Um, it, cliche maybe, but it's true. You know, I've flown fighters for a long time, and I've been to a lot of funerals. We all have. Uh, and we found ourselves lucky to be standing next to the other folks in the uniform at the, at the ceremony. Um, and it's the price of freedom. It's what gets us to where we can, you know, have this interaction or go to the movies. Uh, that's that's what makes all that possible. So I'm happy to be a part of it, whether it's the film or the Navy writ large and, and all of my brothers and sisters that do it with me. And you said America is the big win. That's that's kind of the, the overlying, cool. underlying, all around factor. And uh, so excited for this. Thank you, Brian, for your time. Really appreciate it. And yeah. looking forward to having more people see the movie. Go see it. Go see it twice. <laughs> I've seen it a few times. I, I go to all the premieres and I've seen it several times and I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing it again. It's a great movie. You're going to love it. I guarantee it.